Shalom. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David, the elect, the 144,000 men that are doing this thing in sincerity and the utmost truth. Believing, prophesying, and following after the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. All right, the house of David, um, and much love, peace, and humility to the one third of the nation of Israel, the men, women, and children that are listening, learning, and helping in all sincerity and humility to you all. I say greetings and shalom. All right, so I think I've been, I'm going to entitle this something about like uh, only for the elect. And you know, obviously, uh, I want to put a disclaimer out, you know, before I get into the lesson, I don't want people getting a wayward thought like. You know, this message is only, I mean, ultimately, all of our messages are only for the elect. But, you know, this is not me saying I'm a I'm an elect member, Lord willing I am. But this is not me saying that. All right. But I, I the reason why, I'm, let me talk about why I'm doing this lesson. Okay. Because so tonight I had a, um, a idea that I was going to do a different lesson. And it's the Sabbath now, you know, but the Lord has set up to where this came out. And that's because, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm chilling at my house. You know, I'm not going to go into super major detail about it, but I'm chilling in my house. Basically, one of my friends in the world hits me up, you know, and uh, basically he ended up coming over, you know. And so we had we end up getting into like, first off, like a, a dispute about our friendship. Number one, <laughs> you know, it's so, hey to put that part plainly. Hey, I might have lost a, a friend who I've known for for years now, you know. Um, and basically, when he comes around, I typically keep my conversation so to speak, limited, you know what I'm saying? We talk about worldly shit, but you know, I don't really talk about the truth and stuff like that. Basically he was, he started saying he felt like our friendship has grown stagnant, you know, talking like a woman and shit first off, but it's really, the real thing is what he, he couldn't really get to what he meant by it. But what he really meant by it is when we talk, I don't give him, I hold back the truth, so to speak. He didn't necessarily say it that way, but I know what he was getting at. He didn't know what he was really asking, but and, you know, I keep things from him, so to speak. But see, the thing is, I've told him, I told him this today, too. I was like, I've thrown little nuggets out there for you to receive. He started saying, like, yeah, like what it is that you believe and all this kind of stuff. You know, I've thrown little nuggets out there. I tested his spirit and they were always rejected, you know, but he don't understand that this is not for everybody. He don't understand that, you know, and I couldn't say that. So, of course, he starts scoffing, talking about, you know, everybody in the world, they got their own beliefs. What if they right? You know, all of that nonsense. And I kept, I, I told him plainly, like, hey, man, they're all wrong. Straight like that. I said, hey, man, Christians, uh, Muslims, you know, Hindus, all of them are wrong. And see, he like, how could you say that? How could you say that? You know, what if they right? What do they believe? Hey, and I told him, I said, when it comes down to it, judgment day. And even before Judgment Day, people are going to know that we were telling the truth. So lock it. I had to drink some water. But, you know, before that, people are going to know. But, hey, man, when the shit hits the fan, everybody's going to know that somebody, so to speak, religion was correct. All right. And I kept telling him, I know that I'm right. But I was telling him it's not about me. It's about the Heavenly Father and the Heavenly Father's will. He's like, you know. Uh, and I know I'm carrying on, but just stick with me. Bear with me for a second. But he's like, I know. Uh, so if you say this, this ketchup is the best ketchup in the world, but everybody else got their own ketchup, you know, little two third bullshit. And I'm not saying he a two third. The Lord could have mercy on him. You know what I'm saying? If I'm a man, the Lord, Lord could have mercy on him. I pray he does. But, you know, he, he believe in Egypt titles. He believe woman is God. All that nonsense. You know, so this is why I can't break bread with him, so to speak. But and I should have held my peace. But hey, he was asking for it, so shit, I gave it to him. But nonetheless, he. So then I told him, I said, the thing about it is, it's not about if I believe that this ketchup is the best ketchup. The heavenly Father said that this is the best ketchup. So if the heavenly Father said that's the ketchup, that's the ketchup I want. And all the other ketchups is watered down bullshit. You know, straight like that. And so he, he just certain stuff he can receive. So basically, it inspired me to do this lesson. Because I told him, we ain't, I'm not out here to c convert people, man. You know, I can, we not out here to convert people. Matter of fact, let me, let me start with that precept. Because there's only 
we will know if you're going to be, so to speak, converted, which are, first off, you had to be an Israelite in the first place um, of the tribe of, uh, of the a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by blood. All right, but let me, this is Matthew 13 and 11. And this is why he just can't get it. He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. All right, so everybody ain't gonna know the mysteries, man. Everybody ain't gonna understand this Bible. And I kept telling them, majority of people not gonna get it. You know, I gave him the analogy of Noah. You know, and Noah was out there prophesying for 100, 120 years, man, and people didn't listen. You know, and they died. And but what was his response? Oh yeah, they committed incest. You know, all that kind of. You know, so these people's understanding of the Bible is flawed. You know, every time I ask them a straight up question, do you believe in the Bible? Yes or no? I believe there are some truths to it. Hey, no, no, hey, the scriptures say eat the whole roll, man. Either you believe or you don't. Ask them who his God is. He ended up saying, I am a God. I was like, yes, you are a God, but who is your God? Oh, well, you know, I am God. Oh, so you created the winds. You created the clouds. Oh, no. Well, God dwells in me. So therefore I am, you know, all that bullshit, man. You know, so this is why I can't speak to him or I have to speak to him with a certain level. So, hey man, who knows today after today, he may not, we may not talk again. You know, you know, it's all through the spirit, but who knows, man? You know, Matthew 13 and 12. Uh, let me jump to 13. Therefore, speak out to them in parables because they see not and hearing they hear not. Neither do they understand. So that's when I was when he was like basically having more substance in our conversation that's why i talk two-third bullshit he was over there watching rap battles you want to talk about rap battles okay let's talk about rap battles you want to talk about boxing let's talk about boxing you want to talk about the latest music that have been out let's talk about the latest music that have been out you know he was he got mad at me because i was uh he had on some glasses he had on some sunglasses in the house mind you it's it had to be what 9 30 pitch black outside he got a hoodie on with the hood on his head Walks in the house Got the hood on his head With sunglasses And I'm not trying to put him on blast You know what I'm saying Because I do got a love for him Because he's he's been a long time friend Before the truth You know So I try not to You know Be too hard on him But you know We make jokes about each other And shit like that So then I was like well, Who are you trying to stun on Like you know what I'm saying He's like Well he's like That's what you feel like I'm trying to do I'm like Okay well just be real I feel like the glasses Are unnecessary You know You're in the house And it's nighttime. He's like Oh I'm just being me Right You just acting like a niggard man you know, and it's sad to say, but you are, man. You act like a nigger, man. Just take the damn glasses off, bro. Like, who you trying to impress, man? You know, what it is what it is. You know, people are trying to hide their, their uh, light now, man. All right, the eye is the light of the body. But so that's why when I speak to him, I speak about everyday stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't be trying to go into the scriptures. But today, I brought out a couple scriptures. But we end up mainly talking because he couldn't, he couldn't receive it, man. It says, uh, verse 14, and in them which is fulfilled the prophecy, prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand. See that? So just though he, he though I told him, you know, though I told him that, hey, man, martial law is coming. Though I told him RFID chip coming. Though I told him the Lord is about to return. Did he receive any of that? No. But he said, see, this whole time you didn't agree with nothing I said, but I said some things that I agree with what you said. Bro, you didn't agree with nothing that I said. Because if, you, if you're taking bits and pieces that you don't agree with, you're not agreeing with what I'm saying. You're going against what I'm saying. All right? But I told you, no, I'm not. I said, no, I didn't agree with nothing you said. And see, they, the people don't like hearing that. He, he's like, man, you've you been right, you know, since 07. That was the year I met him. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like, you know, I, I will say, you know, I had this symptom in the world, <laughs> a symptom, so to speak, where people always said, like, I was a know-it-all. You know what I'm saying? And I, I do got my, I will, I won't lie. I got my times where I know I, I, I act like I know shit, you know, but that was in the world. But, you know, it, everything was set up for a reason, you know. Apostle R said, hey, man, we know it all. You know, so once I found out the truth, now I got the answers. I got the keys of knowledge through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemiah Shah. So I don't walk around with my chest puffed out, you know, acting all proud. Like, oh, yeah, I got the truth. I got the truth. You know, it ain't that type of thing, man. But when it comes, you know, uh, man, like uh, a couple women I didn't have before, you know, I didn't told them, hey, you can be right about shit that's in the world. But when it comes to this Bible, I ain't wrong. You know, when it comes to the state of this world and what's going to happen, I'm not wrong. And none of the men of the Lord, none of the elect are wrong. 
because we know what's about to happen. And Lord willing, we're that number. We know what's coming, but people can't receive that, man. All right. It says, uh, verse Matthew 13 and 13. Therefore, I speak out to them in parables because seeing they sing, see not and hearing they hear not. Neither do they understand, man. He couldn't even understand. You know, he, he they just can't get it, man. And this is the conversion part. It says, for this people's heart is wax gross and the ears are dull of hearing. Hey, he's dull of hearing, man. As times I'm talking to him, I'm talking about serious matters. He's like, is there missiles in the Bible? I told him like, yeah, 200 million missiles about to destroy America. He didn't want to hear that. You know, oh, that's in there. Yeah, that's in there. Where is missiles at? He got Isaiah 54 and 17 tatted on his arm. You know, don't even know the verse off the, um, you know, don't even know. He got like three Bible verses. Don't even believe in the Bible. He believe in Egypt. He wear like a King Tut thing on his neck. You know, he um, believe woman is God. You know, so you don't understand, man. Okay, he don't, he, don't, he don't know what's going on. All right. It says, their eyes are dull of hearing. Their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. So, hey, the Lord probably, I mean, the Lord ordains a time when he wakes you up and gives you the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding so that your eyes are able to see, your ears are able to hear, all right? And you're able to receive his knowledge, all right? And you're going to understand, you know? So it's not too late for anybody, man. It's not too late for anybody to repent. But, you know, him acting like that, man, I, I told him I ain't out here trying to convert you. That's the only way you're going to be converted if you're trying to be healed, man. If you're trying to know what's really is going to happen to this place, man. The thing is, our people searching for so many truths and not knowing that the, the, the real one is right in front of their face, man. You know, and so it don't matter how we're saying it. The truth is the truth, man. You know, this is uh, verse 16. But blessed are your ears for they hear for they see. Salakia, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. You see that, man? So we're, we're blessed because the Lord has ordained us to see. He's ordained us to hear, to understand the things that are going on in this Bible. And to know that everybody else is not, everybody else's religious garbage is nonsense, man. He's given us that ability. That's a great ability, man. You know, uh, Deuteronomy 7, 6, it says, We shall be a, pe a holy people unto himself above all the nations, man. So even for that reason alone, even if their uh, beliefs, uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to say that, but Let's just say they had anything that was true to their beliefs. For us being a holier and a greater people than them, all of their shit is in, in, in insignificant with that itself. You know? But that's that's to everybody want to receive everybody's nonsense, man. We greater than these people. We're better than these people, man. Thus said the Heavenly Father, man. And through his spirit and his power is why we're better than these people. And it says the, the law... And, all right, our law and our wisdom is how we gonna. Uh, our law shall be the wisdom between us and the other nations, man. They're acting like heathens out here, our people, man. Okay, verse seventeen, it says, "For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them." So, hey, man, there's many people out here to to want to know the the truth, man. Many people that want to get it. But the Lord only gave it to his elect, man. And this thing is precious. All right. That's why, the, that's why Apostle Gabor always says, this thing of ours, man. It's ours. He only gave it to us, man. It's, it's a gift that nobody else can touch. No matter how much they read, no matter how much they dig, no matter how much they uh, scrape, no matter how much even they pray. This is only given to the elect. And I'm even talking about Israel. I'm not just talking about the heathen. Even Israel, two thirds of our, hey, he, he, even him, my friend. All right. Even him, he's desiring to want to know the truth. But the Lord got him shut down the way he can't receive it. He desiring to know what's the real truth. What's the answer? But I told him on judgment day, it's going to be revealed to him, man. You know, and at one part that I'm kind of was holding back, he asked me, I kept telling him, asking, what's his God? Was it? And he kept saying God and all this kind of stuff. He asked me, what's the name? And I didn't tell him. I told him, no. He's like, see, that's what I'm talking about. You you withholding information. If I knew the truth, I ain't going to withhold no information. How you know that ain't the straw that's going to break the camel's back? Bro, 
the people don't of course we understand the gravity and i told them like you don't understand the gravity of that name you know what i'm saying and not only that like our people gonna get it the name eventually but you know a lot of people we tell them regardless but you know people go out and blaspheme the name of the lord make fun of the name of the lord but the reason why I hold the name of the Lord, regardless of just my personal experience, it deserves to be held with that weight. But then not only that, the Lord, the name of the Lord was the last thing I found in my walk before I totally understood the truth. You know, there are many other things that I found out about being an Israelite. All right. Even I, I even feel like I was watching Great Millstone for a little while and I just went and getting the name, man. It's like I was always jumping in on the middle of films or stuff was getting cut off. I don't know. I just was not getting the name. So that name is precious, man. And that name is holy. Separate and set apart, man. And so even giving it to people that's going to mingle it with the world, man. You know, he might get on Google or something and research. But hey, man, it's, it's so much that comes with that name. This is only for the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay. Matter of fact, let me get, uh, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. Let me get Romans. Because I was going to go in another direction. But let me get this, man. We got to stay grateful, man. The Lord gave us something. He could strip it away. He got other people walking around like dead corpses. This is Romans 9. And, um. Uh, it says, uh. I'm going to read Romans 9 and 27. It says, and it shall come to pass. Then in the place where it was, oh no, no, Salakia. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of the sea be as the sand of the sea, the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved, man. It's only going to be a remnant of our people that's saved and delivered out of uh, this hell, man. Okay? This captivity when the, when the Messiah returns. All right? This is Romans 11 and 5. It says, uh, even so then, matter of fact, I'm going to start at four. But what said the answer of Yahweh unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. All right. So, hey, you know, my friend, he's bowing the image to the, the knee to the image of Baal. All right. But, hey, he's going to know on that day. The scriptures say every man shall uh, bow, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess. All right. But those 7,000 men are talking about the elect. All right. That the 7,000 number of completion. Okay? And we're bowing only to Yahweh Shem Yahushai. Okay? It says, uh, even so then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Alright? So there's only a remnant, man. Okay? The remnant is going to be the ones that's delivering because that's where the grace kicks in. The grace is kicked in for only the 144,000 and the one third. Alright? That grace wasn't applied to the rest of the world because they sought not after the Holy One of Israel. All right. Uh, verse seven. What then? Israel had not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it and the rest were blinded. You see that the election had uh, they the, the, uh, the two thirds of our people. They haven't received it, man. All right. They've been seeking. Hey, he's seeking regardless if he believe it or not. He's seeking for the answers, but hey, when you you can lay, hey, you can drag a horse to the water, man. All right, but when you get there, you know if you stuff his head in the water, if he ain't gonna drink it, he ain't gonna drink. It. If the Lord don't want him to drink that water, he not gonna drink that water. All right. It says, according as it is written, Yahweh hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day, man. They're blinded unto this very day, man. All right? That's that's what's literally just happened in my home. You know? And I didn't want to see it turn out that way. You know? Even though we got a soft spot even for our people in the world, man. You know, the Lord ain't completely hardened our hearts to even, even though they're not following the law, statutes, commandments of the Heavenly Father. He ain't even hardened our hearts towards them. You know, we still want to see them delivered. He said, oh, so I'm not worth salvation. And I told him, hey, you still could be delivered even though you don't believe. You know, the Lord's going to deliver people that might not believe, but had a certain love and compassion towards the men of the Lord and his elect. But is it a great chance that he could get destroyed too? Hell yeah. You know, because I told him the truth, you know, and the way he was acting today, you know, he walked out and he said, you know, he tried to say, I love you. You know what I'm saying? You know, we men, you know, I told him I love you too, but hey man, 
the thing is, I'm trying to love you how about Shemel Shine. I'm trying to show you to do the same thing as well. But you can't even get ba- he couldn't even get basic stuff, man. I've been talking about pork. You know, I've been talking, I told him I threw him little nuggets. He said over the past three years. I threw him little nuggets over the past three years, man. Did he receive it? Hell no, nah, man. But that's because this is only for the elect. All right, and this is why, you know, I used to have a, a little cold where I don't even talk to really family members unless I see that they're humble enough to receive something. You know, but I don't really, I try, I stray, like, you know, one of my cousins, actually both of my cousins, they listen. They don't, they don't necessarily follow the law, but they listen, you know what I'm saying? They don't buck up when I tell them about the scriptures, you know, back in Detroit. But nonetheless, do I, uh, I, I, do I make it a point to talk to my family about the truth? Nah, man, I try to avoid it at all costs. Unless it's forced out of me, man. You know, because it, it ruins relationships. Because the scripture said that, that your greatest foe shall be they of your own household, man. You know, your friends and your family, a man is not a prophet in his own country, man. You know, like you said, he knew me in 07, man. I ain't learned the truth that early. You know, so he like, hey, man, you know, you don't know shit. You know, who are you? You know, you just a dude I knew in the world. You don't know shit, man. That's what he thinks of me. You know, but he also thought I, th- I thought low of him. He said, every time you think about me and say something, it's always negative. Hey, bro, you created that image for yourself, man. You know? But, um, it says, uh, verse 9 and 10, it says, and Romans 11 and 9, and David says, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. You see that? Let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block. Okay, so he asked, why, why, why would God, the name is Jesus in the Bible. Why would his name not be Jesus if it's written in there? See, that's just confusing to me. But the Lord made that a stumbling block. He put that in there to be a stumbling block to these people. He don't want everybody to know his name. Look what they do with the name Jesus, man. They discard that name around like it's feces, man. You know, they fling that name around like it's, it's trash, man. Jesus Christ, you stub your toe. Oh, yeah, somebody got killed. Jesus. You know, every time it's G- Jesus this, Jesus that. They throw that name around willy-nilly, man. The only time we send, when we send Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man, it ain't, it, we don't never stub our tongue. Like, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. No, man. We say all praise, call Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All praise to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Tawada Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai. You know, that's the kind of spirit we come in when it comes to that name, man. But these people don't give it. Every time we say the name of the Lord, we're giving glory to it, man. Not diminishing it and watering it down and disrespecting it. That's why we can't get a name to everybody, man. This is only for that remnant of the Heavenly Father, man. People, it says, uh, you know, one of the uh, Ten Commandments is taking out the Lord, uh, uh, the name of the Lord that God in vain, man. He would have got the name in vanity emptiness so that name you're not carrying you're not understanding the brevity and the gravity of that name if you've ignored everything else that i said you're gonna hey that name you're gonna hey it is what it is that name is precious man cast not thy pores before cast not thy pearls before swine man so like you you know i ain't necessarily trying to call my boy swine but damn bro that's a that's a great golden pearl, man. It says the kingdom of heaven is like unto him that finds a goodly pearl and sells everything that he has, man. Sells all his pearls so he can buy that pearl, man. The name of the Lord is a pearl, a gem, a jewel, man. Verse ten: Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see. And bow down their back all the way. You see that? So the Lord, uh, he's darkened their eyes, man. He's darkened them so that they can receive this, man. That holy remnant is what, what's important in the eyes of Yahweh, man. He loves all of Israel, man. But right now, he says, two-thirds of our people just not going to get it. They're going to keep on living this Babylonian lifestyle. They're going to keep on being comfortable in this place. They're going to keep on being in their peace and safety. They're going to keep on believing in an American dream. All right? This is Ezekiel 6 and 8. Yet will I leave a remnant that ye may have some that shall escape the sword among the nations when ye shall be scattered through the countries. The Lord said he's going to leave a remnant. Who's that remnant, man? The elect of the nation of Israel. 
All right, because all the things that came upon us in old ancient times, all the things that's about to happen in the world now, he said he's gonna leave a remnant, man. All right, that's gonna escape the sword. All right, that 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 uh that uh that coronavirus, that's a sword, man. We ain't gotta wear masks, brothers. All right, that uh that Esau's gun, that's a sword. All right, the RFID chip, that's a sword, man. That's a big ass sword. You know. And we're going to escape it through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahshua. Verse 9. I'm going to just read this. I was reading it for a second. And I love this verse, actually. It says, And they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations whither they shall be carried captives, because I am broken with their whorish heart, which have departed from me, and with their eyes, which go whoring after their idols. Then that's that's what you do, man. You go whoring after their idols, man. We did that at one point in time, man. Go whoring, uh, making ourselves adulterers, man. Fornicators, spiritual fornication, man, on the heavenly Father. Do not this thing that I hate. It says, and they shall loathe themselves for the evils which they have committed in all their abominations. We loathe ourselves, man. We despise ourselves for the things that we did against the heavenly Father. But these, he, he, I asked him, I said, is smoking blunts right or wrong? And he said, it's, that's up to the person. I said, the Heavenly Father said smoking blunts is wrong. So when I thought about me smoking blunts, I loathed myself. All right? We started talking about him saying, he like, yeah, yo, it's about your delivery. I said, it ain't about my delivery. I ain't trying to persuade you or convert you. Either you're going to receive it or you're not, man. I said, when I first learned about stop smoking weed, uh, I didn't hear a brother say, hey, y'all brothers, hey, you need to go ahead and put that blunt out. I heard a brother from Great Millstone say, hey, man, you better put that, stop smoking that fucking weed or you're going to get put to death. That's what I heard, man. You know? Did he say it light and sweet? No, he told me straight up that the Lord's going to kill me if I keep doing it, man. So I loathed myself, man. I came back to you, how about Shimmy Yahshua? Lord willing, I'll be at that number. And Lord willing, for all you brothers and sisters and children that's tuning in, man. That believe in this thing with sincerity and utmost truth, man. Verse 10. And they shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh, and that I have not said in vain that I will do this evil unto them. So the Lord said he ain't say that stuff in vain. When the Lord said he's going to kill you, he didn't say that with an empty promise. An empty threat. He said that with a guarantee on it, man. All right, when he said you you, uh, you can return back to him, he's going to show you mercy and grace. He, he gave you that with a guarantee on it. Okay? Let me get a... Uh, I think I want... Let me get Isaiah first. This is Isaiah 10 and 20. It says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel in truth. You see that? So he's still staying upon those that smote him, man. He still want to be an Egyptian. All right. Everybody still want to act like our oppressor. But now we're staying upon Yahweh by Shemuel Shai, the Holy One of Israel, man. That's where our stay is. Because it says the name of the Lord is a, is, a, is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. You know, like you playing baseball, safe. That's what we trying to hear, man. That's what we want to be, man. Because a lot of these people, you know what they're going to hear? You're out. And by out, there's going to be the missiles coming down, raining on their heads, man. Verse 21. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty power. You see that? The remnant is going to return. So everybody ain't going to return, man. Only the elect are going to return until you all about Shemuel Shai. It really ain't that hard to get, man. Yeah, two-thirds of our people got to die. So be it, man. Thus saith the Lord. And this is the verse, this is Isaiah 10 and 22 is the precept for, uh, I believe the Romans that I read earlier, Romans 9 and 27. It says, for though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness, man. You see that? 
So the remnant is going to return, man. And that, that's what the Bible says, man. He didn't want to hear me. He said he's going to use the Bible as your source, you know, to defend it. So, hey, if you don't want to hear the words out of the Bible, man, we ain't got nothing to talk about, really. To put it plainly, man, this is our source. This is what we use to justify ourselves. And the thing is, these people, they only want opinions. They don't have anything to justify themselves. We got a foundation in Yahweh Shai, in the scriptures. Zephaniah 3 and 13. It says, the remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. You see that? So we ain't out here uh, sinning willfully. We ain't out here speaking lies, man. We are here telling truth. Okay? We're not going to be having out here with tongues of deceit. All right? And we're not afraid of the other nations because of, because of uh, this. The Lord said he had not given us a spirit of fear. You know, let me get Revelation 14. This is Revelation 14. And uh, I'm going to read 1 through 5, actually. It says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 140 and 4,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. You see that? So who's out there with the with, with Yahweh Shai? Okay? Because that is also in 2nd Ezra, the second chapter. The 144,000 of the nation of Israel. It didn't say all the Israel is up there, man. That's the 144,000. And his elect are going to be delivered, man. It says, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So, you know, if I, if I give him the name, he automatically feel like he got the understanding. Nah, man, you got to dig for that, man. You know, we give it to some people that seem sincere. We even tell some people that seem wicked so they'll know who's going to be the person judging them. You know, it says, and I heard a voice from heaven and that word written in their foreheads. That's not literal writing, but that's because we have it sealed. We understand the name of the Lord. We got his knowledge, wisdom and understanding in our minds and our forefronts, our frontlets. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung it as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that. No man could learn that song with the 140 and 4,000 which were redeemed from the earth, man. So you think my boy is about to go on the highways and byways and start singing? You think he's about to start doing the work of the Heavenly Father? He could. You know, let, we always say, lest ye repent. But the odds are against him, man. The odds are against him knowing this melody to this song, man. I pray the Lord have mercy on him. But is he going to be out here singing? Is he going to understand this thing right now? The chances are no. It says, uh, these are they which were not defiled with women. For they are virgins. All right. Or defiled with the, the different doctrines. Uh, that are upon the earth. You know, the scriptures talk about in Proverbs about not being with a strange woman, man, not dealing with these different philosophies and doctrines with these other religions. All right. And their other understandings because they're all false. That's what I. So let me go back to Zephaniah 3 and 13, because that's what it was the precept for the remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. All right. So reading on, it says the river Revelation 14 and four. These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgin, virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto the Most High and unto the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of the Most High. So are we, you know, he kept trying to say, you, you, got, you think you know everything, you know? Hey, you know, it ain't about knowing everything, man. You know, the scriptures say, be prepared to answer every man, man. Okay, but nonetheless, we are. I'm not out here lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. Now, if you don't want to receive it, John 8 and 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Hey, if you want to be imprisoned in darkness, then that's the will of the Heavenly Father. Okay, ain't nothing I can do about it. And I can't make you see this thing. All I can do is show you the light, man, through the Spirit of the Lord. All I can do is show it to you. You know, if, you, but if I'm like, hey, man, it's a big ass. If I turn on the light bulb right in front of you. And your ass like, hey, I can't see. If you blind, you can't see the light, man. And as our people, they're blinded. As it is this day. 
Okay, so hey man, we we ain't no guile found in our tongue. Ain't no mischief. Ain't no deceit. Okay. Let me get a. This is slightly different, but I thought it was fitting because it talks about the remnant. This is a uh, Revelation 12 and 17. It says, and the dragon was wroth with the woman. That's talking about um, EU, NATO, Esau's uh, uh, society, his uh, ruling structure, his powership, powership, his uh, rulership and his power. You know, it says, uh, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Okay, who's the remnant of the seed of the woman? All right, the nation of Israel, and, and Esau is trying to make a trying to make war with us, and they're going to try to make war with Yahweh Shai when he returns too. It says, "Which keep." So, okay, let me read that again. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, that's Israel, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, that's the elect. All right, because the remnant are those that are going to come back to Yahweh by Shimei It says the remnant shall return, so they're going to make a war with the, with the remnant because they know that the least know that we telling the truth. All right. It says, which keep the commandments of the Most High and have the testimony of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. So you see that? They, they are making, they ain't trying to make war with the other nations. They ain't even trying to make war with all Israel ultimately. They're trying to make war with the remnant of our seed who keep the commandments. Because those who keep the commandments in sincerity and truth are uh, uh, the men of great millstone and those of like mind, man. The elect of the nation of Israel. Lord willing, we be of their number. And have the testimony of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. What's the testimony of Yahweh Shai? Revelation 19 and 10 says the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. All right? And we're prophesying, man. When we tell these people these things are going to come to pass and they don't want to listen, Ezekiel 33 and 33, man. Lo, it will come. Then you shall know that a prophet has been among you, man. So it's not until, it's always when it's too late it's when the people say, hey, yo, he was telling the truth. He was a prophet. And I've even told, and that just reminded me. Uh, me and him went to a, a mall before. I don't know how long ago it was. Me and him went to a mall, and he, he this lady, I, I went, we went into a stone store, and he act, the lady asked me, "Oh yeah, you know, we do like uh, spiritual meetings, tarot card readings, and all this kind of stuff." I said, "No, no, I'm good." She said, "You can find out who you were in your past." Like I said, "No, no, no, thank you, I'm good." And so then I walked out and then he was like, why, why didn't you know you be all into spiritual stuff? Why didn't you consider that? I said, because I already know who I was in my past life. And I wasn't trying to be boisterous. And I was going to leave it at that. I wasn't even going to comment more. But he asked, he's like, who were you? And I was like, I was a prophet. You know, Lord willing. You know, I didn't even say Lord willing. Part. In my mind, I said Lord willing. But, you know, to him, to men like that, you, you sometimes you got to keep it 100, man. I was a prophet. I was doing the will of the Heavenly Father, man. So I don't need some left-hand witchcraft lady to tell me about who I was in my past life. You know? And see, that even that stuff like that is hard for him to receive, man. But because they don't like your delivery, because they don't like the fact that they could be wrong. Pe that's another thing. People necessarily don't get mad at the fact that you feel like you're right all the time. People really get upset because they can't say the same things to the same extent that you say them. If we say we got the truth and we know, they get offended at that. That upsets people. What do you mean you know? You ain't got all the answers. You don't got all the answers, Sway. Hey, through the spirit and power of your Habash, we do, though. We do. And so when you know, you know, man. It is what it is, man. We got the truth, man. You know, the Lord says there's a time to abase and a time to abound, man. And sometimes we just got to abound with this thing. We know, man. You know, it's all through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, not of ourselves. And I kept saying that. I said, it ain't about me, man. I'm just a vessel. It's about the will of the Lord. But if you can't, he's, you can't receive small stuff, how are you going to be able to receive that, man? I can't even tell you to not eat pork and smoke weed. How are you going to receive heavenly things, man? You can't even receive the earthly. That's, those two things are common sense not to do. Once, once somebody tell you that it's bad for you, man. Let me, let me, let me. I got a few presets out here, and just bear with me. I'm, you know, I know this this video might end up lengthier than I expected, man. But it, it needs to be said, man, because our our people are are so gone, man. We can't wait till Yahweh Shai comes back, man. It says things in order. 
We sighing and crying truly. This is uh, Ecclesiastes or Sirach 44 and 17. It says, uh, Noah was found perfect and righteous. In the time of wrath, he was taken in exchange for the world. You see that? In the time of Noah, he was found perfect and righteous, man, in the time of wrath. And that's, did I not just read in Revelation 14 and 5? It says, and their mouths was found no guile, and they were without fault before the throne of the Most High? That's perfect and righteous, man. Even though our, un our unrighteousness be as filthy rags, when the Yahweh Shah comes back, he's going to be like, hey, yo, these men, these women, these children, these are the ones who are found without fault. They followed me the best that they could. Being in the chains of darkness. All right. It says Noah was found perfect and righteous in the time of wrath. He was taken in exchange for the world. Therefore, was he left as a remnant unto the world, unto the earth when the flood came? You see that? So, hey, it says he was made a remnant into the earth. He's left as a remnant. All right. And this time the remnant is going to be delivered up, man. All right. And the, the rest of you people are going to be the ones to get flooded. You know, our art going to be looking from the heavens down on you people, man. Because it says next an everlasting covenant was made with him that all flesh should perish no more by the flood. All right. And that, this time it's going to be a flood of fire because he made that covenant with, uh, with Noah that he wouldn't do that again. And so when I told him 200 million missiles going to rain down in America, how do you know that? Oh, missiles is in the Bible. Yeah, man. Multiple times, man. Many times it's in here. But since Jake can't read and say uh, thermonuclear missiles will destroy America, they can't receive it. You know, they need to see it. He like the word Jesus is in there. They need to see it verbatim. But that's why the Lord put these stumbling blocks. You got to go. You got to dig the truth. What treasure, you know. Was ever just sitting on the damn beach What treasure you know You just walking down the street And you just see a million dollars Just laying on the curb Treasure always gotta be digged man Alright Whenever you find a gold Any of them movies They were in caves They digged up under the earth You know Something hidden somewhere in Some magical place Mystical place You know that's how the truth is, man. It's a treasure, and you got to dig for it, man. You got to dig deep. This ain't something, you know, some brothers looked up. You know, I've heard testimonies of some brothers walking down the street, hear the truth, the next thing you know, they're converted. You know? But shit, something, man, I had to dig, man. And I know my, and even when you get the truth, you still got to dig. So regardless of even if you found it easily, you still started digging. Because you could have digged enough just to scrape the service and ended up following IUIC. You could have ended up following another camp. You could have ended up following something that wasn't the truth. You know, so the thing is, even once you get in the truth, you got to keep digging, man. So you can find what the real truth is. Even if you see, the thing is, people when it comes to the truth, they dig until they see the gold, the top of the gold. You might see it run into a couple coins. Be like, hey, yo, I found it. I'm good right here. But we trying to find the whole boat. We trying to find the whole chest. You know? Spiritually speaking. Okay? Ecclesiastes 47 and 22. It says, uh, But the Lord will never leave off his mercy, neither shall any of his works perish, neither will he abolish the posterity of his elect. And the seed of him that loveth him, he will not take away. Therefore, he gave a remnant unto Jacob, and out of him a root out of David unto David. See, if we were, if the Lord really, if we were really bought that life and and continuing and pursuing wickedness, the Lord would have destroyed us, man. He could have. All right, but he said he gonna leave off the posterity of his elect, man. All right, he says, and we love him, so he hey, he not gonna take us away. He not gonna make us perish. All right. It's all about the elect. It's only for the elect, man. And any any church, any uh, doctrine, regardless of what uh, religion, regardless of what Israelite camp, if they ain't talking about the elect, hey, it's not where it's at because the Lord talks about the elect up and down. Matter of fact, let's get some. Um, let's get that. Let, let's see who the Lord's coming for, man. Is he coming for all Israel? 
Because I don't, I, according to the scriptures, it don't say that, man. This is Matthew 24 and 30 through 31. It says, and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall the sign of the son of man is going to be that Yahweh Shah coming in his chariots. Who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right. It says, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other man so he ain't gathering everybody man that's plain that's plain right there and Yahweh said that himself he ain't coming to gather everybody he's coming to gather his elect man so that's what that ought to be your striving point man Ooh, perfect transition actually that ought to be what you what we striving to do man But you people are striving to do what you want to do, what you think is right. Your personal opinions, man. Hey, man, damn my opinion, man. My opinion don't mean nothing, man. So if you want it, I don't even count it as nothing. I, we only worry about the Heavenly Father's opinion, man. What is what is what does the Bible say? What is the Heavenly Father's opinion on the subject? I'm gonna pass up the chapter. This is Colossians 3. And 12 and says put on therefore as the elect of the most high holy and beloved bowels of mercies kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as a Mashiach forgave you and also do ye man all right the scripture says uh, put on therefore as the elect of the most high holy and beloved holy means Kodash separate and set apart man all right, we got to separate ourselves from this world and we got to put on as the elect. We got to cast away the old man, walk in the new, follow the law, set his commandments, believe and have faith because without faith, it is impossible to please you. How about you? How shy, man? That's plain. First Thessalonians one and four. It says, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of the Most High. And so this is when um, uh, they were uh, speaking to the Thessalonians, but it applies to us spiritually. It says, knowing, bre no knowing therefore, brethren, uh, beloved brethren, your election of the Most High. And it was that 2 Peter 1 and 10. It says, uh, doing these things, you shall never fall, man. All right. Make your calling and election sure. Okay, so we got to put on as the elect, man, because it's only about the elect, man. Hey, and uh, the brother from Bahamas posed a, tr a real question. He says, are you settling to be one of the one third? Or are you trying to be 100, one of the 144,000? You know, and that should have resonated in a lot of brother spirits, man. And look, man, I'm, I'm going to just be frank, you know, and I've told this to my camp before, man. And I, 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 I say this in a humble manner and I pray it's received that way. I say, hey, brothers, look, we not on these highways and byways to be a part of the one third. If that's the Lord's will, let his will be done first and foremost, always. Hey, even if he decide that we not one of the men of the Lord, let his will be done regardless. But the things that we are doing, the works that we are doing are works that befitting of the elect of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. So that is supposed to be our striving point, man. If you if you plan a game, you don't strive to be second best or third best. You strive for to be the top, man. All right, we're trying to be the new government of Israel, and you have to have that mindset if you're going to be a next ruler, man. So we're trying to be. We, you should be fighting to try to be one hundred and one forty four. Now everybody ain't got with one forty four spirit. I get it. You know, they're going to be the, and the one third are just as important. And I never diminish that. The one third are just as important, just as efficient, just as a part of the body as the one forty four. But the one forty four thousand are going to be the governing body of the nation of Israel. The examples that were set forth that stood stiffly for the name of Yahweh by Shemi Shai. OK. Uh, get this Titus. This is Titus 1 and 1.
called a servant of the Most High and an apostle of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. All right, so a hey, Paul is part of the elect. It spoke about, speaks about Nehemiah being part of the elect. All of the prophets in the Bible are part of the elect. All right, and there, there are many prophets in this Bible, not just the ones that got names of books, man. You'll, you'll read the stories, and sometimes it'll say, a seer amongst them. A prophet was there. You know, stuff like that. There are prophets that aren't even named in here. That are, because there are 144,000. Those are all prophets, man. All right? So regardless of you see the name or not, you know, they try to say major or minor prophets. All the prophets are equally important, man. They might have different portions of faith. Might have different portions of uh, works. But they're all important. Look at the book of Obadiah, man. Shit, when you want to get busy on Esau, what you do? You pull out that hammer on Obadiah, and it's one chapter long. You can't tell me Obadiah ain't a raw book, man. You can't tell me he, the book of Obadiah is least important than another other book. How do we know that Esau ain't going to be here? How do we know that all the Edomites are going to get killed away? The book of Obadiah. How do we truly know the uh, full essence of Esau's wickedness? The book of Obadiah. And Obadiah in Hebrew is Ibadia, which means Yahweh's servant, man. We're here to serve Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. The holy remnant is doing that, man. Even the one third. It says the scriptures say we, we shall speak to, to save those and those that believe thee, man. Not, not, not only ourselves, but to also those that hear us, man. Okay. Um, let me get John 17 real quick. And then I think I got two more verses. Two or three more, and I'll wrap it up. Um this is John 17 and 9. It says, I have manifested my name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine were thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. So is the Lord praying for everybody? No, he's praying for the men that were given him, the elect. It says, Now they they have not, now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. So we know that everything that was given to Yahweh Shai was from Yahweh. And everything that's given to us was through Yahweh Shai by Yahweh. It says, For I've given unto them words which thou gavest me, the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them. See that? I told him something. I said, Man, you're not receiving what I'm saying. And he said, Oh, I received it. No, you didn't. You heard me and you shunned it off. All right? We receive, when you receive something, all right? When, that's like you playing football and you throw the, the ball to the wide receiver. The only way he receives that ball is if he catches it. All right, if he catches the ball, but if you you can't say you received it if you 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 touched it in your hands for a second and dropped it because then you fumbled it. So unless you take it and take hold of it, you haven't received it, man. So he didn't receive anything. It says, uh, "And have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me." I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Oh, I said 17 and 9. I meant 17 and 6 when I started, Salakia. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. You see that? We belong to Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Because you read John, what's that, 16 and 15? If I can get that real quick. John uh, 15 and 16. It says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain that whoever shall... Whoever, whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. You see, so the Heavenly Father, through his Son, chose us out of the world. All right? And so the Yahweh Shai gave all the things unto us through Yahweh. Okay? This knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. All And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. It says, And now I am no more in the world, but those, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. See that? We want to be, because we say they're going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, okay? According to uh, Romans 8 and 17, if I'm not mistaken. All right? It says, uh, it says, through his own name we were given. Through his name of Yahweh. The name is precious, man. It says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I've kept, and none of them is lost. All right? None of the elect. It says, my sheep hear my, John 10 and 27, my sheep hear my voice, man. 
The sheep are not going to go astray. The elect cannot be plucked out of his hand. All right. It says, I've kept and none of them is lost because he's the good shepherd. All right. It says, does not a shepherd leave to go find his one sheep that has been lost? But the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come, now I come, um, and that's talking about uh, uh, Judas Iscariot. It says, and now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, and that they might have joy fulfilled in themselves. I've given them thy word, and, thy, and the world had hated them. You see that? So, hey, he probably got a different level of hate for me now, man, because the Lord gave us. See that? <laughs> the Lord gave, gave us the word, man. You know, Lord willing, we be that number. He gave us his word, man. He confided this knowledge with us. And that's why we got to humble ourselves. And that's why we got to be appreciative. He could have he could have not chose us. I could have been with him. I could have rolled up a blunt. You know, I've been bugged out of my damn mind being an Egyptologist. But he decided to give that to me. And so I'm grateful for it. And all of the men of the Lord are. And you should be, man. Okay, I've given them thy word and the word I've hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. How do we know the things that come? Because we're not a part of this world. We ain't from here, man. We strangers in a strange land, man. We're visitors waiting on our Lord to redeem us, man. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that sh thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Because things are going to come time. So, yeah, I was like, hey, just Lord, just keep them away from the bad things that are coming because I know they're coming. Just keep them away from it. Your coronavirus coming. Just, just keep the, keep a covering around them. Keep the angels around them, man. This is what Yahweh was praying for us. It says they are not. A, and this this chapter is powerful. And I haven't read it through this on camera in a while. You know, put this on wax in a while. But this chapter is powerful. It lets you know who the Lord was here for, all that He's did for us, how great for you are. And this is Him talking to His Father about. The glory he did for him did for us through him, man. It says they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So Yahweh Shah is not of this world, neither are we, man. Okay? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth, man. So how you know truth when you hear it? It's this word. It says Isaiah 8 and 20, them that don't speak according to this word, to the word and to the testimony of you don't speak according to this word is because there is no light in him. Okay, it says, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so has also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they may also be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray out for these alone. So he didn't just pray just for us, for the 144,000, Lord willing, we're that number. But for them also, which shall believe on me through their word, man. Okay. So the Lord says, not just about us, but us that believe through his word. The the uh one the uh one third the elect who believed on Yahweh Shah through this word man who believed through our prophesying so us being on highways and byways us being on the uh the unicorn the internet us doing lessons so it ain't just about his prayer for us it's about also about the elect man that they may all that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me man. All right, so we, we're going to believe that uh, Yahweh sent Yahweh Shai, and Yahweh Shai is, it has sent us into the world to do the works of the Heavenly Father through the spirit and power of Yahweh, man. You know, so we're all trying to be on, we're all in one accord as far as how, what's happening in the earth, man. But these people there, those are, they are without, man. They don't understand. Okay. I got yeah these last two ones they they should be pretty short and I'll wrap it up. This is Sirac. Sirac. I'm trying to get out of out of saying Sirac because uh, you know that damn drink. So I try to say Sirac now. This is Sirac 17 and 10. There's some nice precepts on this one. I'm gonna start up at A actually. The 10 is the point. Okay, it says, he set his eye upon their hearts that he might show them the greatness of his works. He gave them to the glory in his marvelous acts forever 
that they might declare his works with understanding. And this is the point, Sirach, Sirach 17 and 10. And the elect shall praise his holy name. The elect shall praise his holy name. That remnant is going to praise that name, man. I'm going to read the next verse too. It says, besides this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an heritage. He made an everlasting covenant with them and showed them his judgments. Their eyes saw the majesty of his glory and their ears heard his glorious voice. You see that? So we, we seen and we know all these things. The Lord says, he has, besides this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an heritage. So the law of life, the scriptures he gave for a heritage. That's our heritage, man. Deuteronomy, uh, what's that? It's four and six or six and four. You know, I don't want to get it because I promised y'all two more precepts, but I just want to say it, not say it, but uh, get y'all a proper one. Deuteronomy four and six. You can read uh, five and six, you know, but that's the point on that, man. You know, but uh, let me wrap it up with this wisdom of Solomon. You know, just as a faith booster. Oh, and also Luke 18 and 7 says he shall avenge his elect speedily, man. Okay? That's what we're waiting for. To be avenged through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel We need we need we need to be avenged, man. Our people are even going to start. Our families hate us. Our families don't love us. Your woman don't want to be with you. Your, your job, you, you rule by Edomites and your oppressors. Okay, this is hell, man. So we, we wait on our Lord to avenge us, man. Revelation was at 18. You know, it says, I rejoice ye heavens and ye, you, you holy apostles. For I, avenge, I have avenged you on her. The Lord is going to avenge us, man. This is Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9. It says, they that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. And such as be faithful in love and love shall abide with him for grace and mercy is to his saints and he hath care for his elect. With that, I'm going to give all praise, honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, peace and mercy to the house of David, the elect. All right. Hey, brothers, keep fighting. Keep the faith, man. Hey, man, it's only for the elect. So, hey, it's almost time. We're here. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Passover coming up. Lord with you, Lord willing, we, the Lord be with you all. Your call, your call, your call. Until next time, Shalom.